What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Have a bunch of fun stuff to talk about today, including Final Fantasy XV gets a new Royal Edition, which we're going to go over, and the PC version gets a release date along with a bunch of details. And we had a few new additions to the Nintendo Selects library, and then of course we did get some news about two Gundam games that will be going to different systems, with one being a brand new one. So today guys, let's get started. Final Fantasy XV has had a rocky development. That's kind of putting it lightly, right? We've talked about it on the channel quite a bit actually, with us pretty much figuring this game has to have cost a, a ton of money to get out into the market because it's used, it was the first game using the Luminous engine. It seemed to really get, hit a lot of speed bumps. I shall, I'll say speed bumps lightly. Speed bumps getting to the finish line. Remember, it was originally supposed to be on PS3, moves to PS4, Xbox One, and it finally, finally comes out with a PC version then getting announced. Well, they made some fans pretty pretty frustrated, pretty angry, because they did announce basically something else they get to buy. Current fans, while new fans of the series, get in at a cheaper price point. So the early adopters, as with pretty much anything else, once again ends up being kind of kind of taken advantage of there for money. So what am I talking about? Well, Final Fantasy XV had the Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition announced. Now, what is that exactly? Well, it's almost like a Game of the Year edition. Think of it like that, where you know like a game will come out and it's like Game of the Year. It comes with all the DLC and everything that was purchased prior, and you get it now for one price. They, in fact, they actually made the Royal Edition $50. It's actually $10 cheaper than what you would expect something like that to be. So that's great, right? That sounds good. Well, not only does Royal Edition come with, uh, well, all the features and content from before, it comes with exclusive features and new features that don't appear to be available, at least at this time, hopefully they clarify going forward, does not appear to be available to anyone who has a season pass. You know that thing you buy ahead of time, showing them confidence that you want to play this game and you expect to be compensated for the money you put up in advance, in this case $25, does not appear to have that Royal Edition, like basically exclusive content that's coming with it, which we're gonna check out right here. So, if you buy the Royal Edition, it will come with new updated features, including an expanded map of Insomnia, a region within the game, new enemies, new side quests, and a first person camera mode. The Royal Edition alongside the PC version will launch on March 6th for that retail price of $49.99, that's in US dollars. And if you already own Final Fantasy XV, so even if you've bought the season pass, it looks like the Royal Edition will be available for an additional $19.99. It gives you all the features we just discussed, the updated features that include the, the map, uh, first person camera, side quests, enemies, all of that apparently is something extra that even if you've already bought into that season pass, will have to buy. But if you have not, you just either buy the full version or buy the Royal Edition for $19.99 because believe it or not, that $19.99 comes with all of the season pass content that you spent $5 more to get. So I understand why if you are, say, uh, an early adopter, you bought the game, you bought the season pass, great, that's $85. You don't really expect to have to spend any more money at this point, right? Because you've bought the main game, you've bought the season pass, you get all the DLC, and if a Game of the Year edition comes out later, hey, you know what, I bought in early, that's the way it goes. I got to play all these maps, all these extra episodes, these missions, before anyone else who adopts it a year and a half later, right? Well, now you, I guess you have to buy this Royal Edition for $19.99, so the fact that you have to spend $85 and then another $20 for $105, yeah, I get why you're frustrated, and I would be too. I think what this is showing right now is that Square Enix spent an absolute mint on this game in production to get this to market, and it's showing right now because they're doing anything they can to get more money out of their user base of what I believe is at least 6 million copies right now. They surely want to get to 10 million. I think the PC version is going to help them get there in any other versions they may have set up. We saw that Pocket Edition of Final Fantasy XV. While it's not the actual Final Fantasy XV game, it's still a spinoff of the series. I believe that's something they would include under the Final Fantasy XV umbrella. Much like Final Fantasy VII had spinoffs like Dirge of Cerberus and the movie and everything, they kind of include that all under the intellectual property of Final Fantasy VII. Now, I will say if you're a PC owner and you've been waiting for this game, well, you're gonna make out better than anyone else. You'll get the full version for $49.99, which includes all the DLC from the season pass, the Royal Edition and everything. You're gonna get the best visuals, obviously, as we've seen with PC games. This apparently sports uh, better than 4K resolution for what they said before with possible 8K assets. But the big thing here is, you're gonna have to spend a lot of your hard drive space on this game. Even if you don't do 4K textures or anything, it's still over 100 gigabytes. If you do 4K textures, it's over 155 gigabytes of space. So, you know, as soon as that 
that pre-download starts happening, you might want to start downloading sooner rather than later and, and make sure you have a nice uh, nice chunk of your storage drive ready to go for this game. Either way, if you're if you're a fan of it, uh, you're probably going to buy into the Royal Edition. I just understand why you're frustrated. Uh, I, I am too. I don't think people should have to pay into this if they've already bought the season pass. And now we hear about next year, well this year I should say now we're in 2018, more DLC is probably coming, which means there'll probably be a second season pass. And will fans respond to that positively? Absolutely not. They shouldn't. <laughs> if you have two season passes for a game like this, I would hope that they are just, they need to make money back. I hope they're not doing this for the obvious greed reasons. I hope that there is a serious uh, amount of production cost that we don't know about or haven't really seen outside of what they've told us. So we'll see. But if they announce a second season pass after this Royal Edition and then later on they do the Ultimate Edition, which includes everything else prior, yeah, maybe maybe don't buy the next Final Fantasy on day one because it's clear that uh, this... Square this business practice, it's not good, and I don't think it should be fueled by the fans. Honestly, whenever the next Final Fantasy comes out, if they do have the second season pass and it goes the way I think it will, come back to this video a year from now, I bet you there's going to be an Ultimate Edition announced. Next up, we found out that the PS4 Pro Special Edition Moss Hunter system is coming west, along with the Glacier White one, by the way. We've seen Glacier White Slims, I believe, This is or just regular ones. This is going to be a Glacier White Pro. No word on when that's coming out. I just want to throw that out to you that that is also showing up sometime. But the Monster Hunter one, remember we saw this on Capcom's Japanese Monster Hunter stream where they showed it off? I thought it looked really cool. Remember it was like that? It was just a standard black one, but it had the really cool-looking red controller and that red uh, engravement across it and everything. Well, it is coming west. They announced it originally for Europe yesterday morning. And then as the day progressed, eventually the PlayStation blog did update saying that it is coming to the United States exclusively at GameStop for $449, so $450 is $449.99, and it's going to launch alongside the game January 26. And this is awesome. I love the look of this system. I already have a PS4 Pro. If I didn't and I was getting one specifically for Monster Hunter, I would get this one because it will come with a physical copy of of the game. That's right. It's not going to be like a like a digital download code. It's actually going to be a physical copy of the game. So, I'm liking this. And yeah, I would I would get it if I needed one. I don't need one, but I'm still tempted cuz it just looks so cool. But we'll see. I'll be curious to see how many people actually get it and when we do get an unboxing online, I wouldn't mind checking it out to see how it looks, I guess, on the camera and everything cuz from what I've seen in screenshots, it looks awesome. It's going to be great for any Monster Hunter fans out there. Next up, let's talk about some gun games. The first one we're going to talk about is a new one that was announced by Bandai Namco early yesterday, and it's going to the Japanese market, which we all assume this happens with a lot of the Gundam games. This is going to be Gundam Breaker, and according to them, it's also coming west. This isn't normal. Usually it comes out, they announce it for the Japanese market, great, and then maybe eventually it comes over. In this case, though, it's coming west like right away, and this is great. No release date on it, but 2018 is the year that it's coming out for pretty much everyone, Japanese, uh, European, and the United States markets. Now, what game is this exactly? Well, if you've played some of the Gundam games before, you kind of have an idea, except this one looked kind of interesting because it's going to be, from what I was seeing with the trailer, it's kind of cool. You actually acquire parts from enemy mobile suits by destroying them, but this time around, you won't need to go back to your hangar to equip them. You actually directly do it on the battlefield. When they were walking around, they were just equipping stuff that they were picking up. Kind of a cool idea. I'll have to see how it actually turns out in like the actual game when you're playing. But at least I know I can pick it up out west whenever it does decide to ship. As far as we know right now, 2018 PS4 exclusive. They actually made that very clear in the, in the press release. Exclusivity for the PS4 at this time. But that's the way it goes for a lot of these games when they come over. Generally for this one, they did picked the PS4. However, they gave us some news that a different Gundam game is also making the jump to the Switch. And this was during the Gundam Game New Year Festival 2018 livestream from Tokyo. Bandai Namco announced SD Gundam G Generation Genesis. It's going to be released in Japan for the Nintendo Switch. They had a whole trailer and everything, and it's a strategy JRPG, which is pretty cool. But the big thing I was a little concerned about here was, will it have English subtitles, because the great thing about the Switch that we all know at this point, because we've probably, a lot of us have at least looked at imports or at least bought something off the Japanese eShop, it's region-free completely. So if this has English subtitles, I will I will buy it instantly, it'll get imported over, and I just pop it into my Switch and I'm playing. Or 
or when it gets released on the Japanese eShop, I can just download it and then just turn on English subtitles and I can play it like normal. Now, there are different threads. There was one on Reset Era. I think there was one on NeoGAF for a while where they actually document which games have English subtitles, English text to them. So I'll keep an eye on that and then we'll see what other people say when it comes out if it has an English option because that's the great thing right now about the Switch. Something like uh, SD Gundam G Generation Genesis would normally not be accessible to people outside of Japan for these kind of things. And now with the Switch, you can go on the eShop or you can just import it from places like PlayAsia or even Amazon now, which is kind of cool. I remember Disgaea was getting imported well in advance of it coming out here. Like seriously, uh, like months before it came out uh, in, in the United States, people were just, they were just importing it. So this is great. But uh, if you're looking, if you're a fan of the SD Gundam games where they were like strategy RPGs because they've been out since like the Super Famicom days, check it out. And it does come out April 26th of this year for 6,800 yen. So roughly $60. So it's like 61 and some change. Next up, let's talk about the reveal of Sega's big tease. Remember how they posted on their Twitter account where it was a big light bulb? We actually talked about this in a news wave a few episodes ago where they were teasing something. We were trying to figure it out. And it started to, well, a lot of people started to figure out that it was more than likely a spiritual successor to Theme Hospital. And that's exactly what it turns out that it was. Now, this game is called Two Point Hospital, and it's essentially a spiritual successor to Theme Hospital. And it's pretty much being made by a company called Two Point Studios. It was formed by ex-employees and ex-developers of Theme Park, Black and White, and Fable. And apparently they're gonna come together and make something that is supposed to be kind of tongue-in-cheek, kind of funny. And if you watch the trailer, you kind of get that sense where they're trying to figure out a cure to something called lightheadedness, where they have a light bulb for their head and they're trying to figure this out. And that's the whole point. You build up this hospital and you try to find the cure while I assume managing everything around you. It's very similar, like I said, to Theme Hospital, where it's kind of like a sim type game. And yeah, I, I know people are disappointed, but this is a good game for people who liked those older games like that and really it's it's something that i think people wanted but they really wanted look when when companies tease stuff like this you know people we we get out of control with that right we want something really cool when something like this happens it's great to a, a small subset of people but there are people who wanted things like the shenmue 1 and 2 hd collection right i said fantasy start it's the way it is, but this looks like it should be a pretty cool game for people who like those theme hospital style games. And you know what? It, it will be neat whenever it does come out. We're still waiting for any solid release date. And our last bit of news, let's talk about a few extra additions to the Nintendo Selects line. Now, if you don't know, Nintendo Selects line is kind of like the greatest hits line, but they add games to it that were generally full price, and then they shrink them down to $19.99, brand new. Great values right there at Nintendo Selects. And three new titles that are joining the ranks with that include Super Mario 3D Land, Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds, and the Ultimate NES Remix. Again, they're all going to retail at $19.99, and they will be on sale February 3rd. Now, I love the addition of Link Between Worlds. This more than likely is why Nintendo was looking around and talking to journalists and websites, asking if they can use certain quotes again from them. More than likely when we flip this box over, you'll see a quote from a couple websites or something, or even on the front. But I love the idea of Link Between Worlds being $20 on the 3DS or 2DS or 2DS XL. If you just bought a 2DS XL this past Christmas and you have not had a chance to play something like Mario 3D Land, or in this case, Zelda Link Between Worlds, absolutely buy Zelda Link Between Worlds. It's probably one of my favorite ones, and it is a direct sequel, pretty much, to a, a, a Link to the Past, one of my favorite Zelda games ever made. So check it out, 1999, you can't beat it. Really, you can't go wrong with any of the three. I mean, technically, if you buy, if you spend 60 bucks, which is the same price as a, as a AAA full-fledged game, you can get three really good games. Even the NES Remix is a lot of fun. I do think you'll get more time out of Mario or Zelda in this case, but really, for 20 bucks, can't go wrong with any of them. Ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for Newsway today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, guys. Really helps out the video. If not, hit this like. Leave a bunch of comments down below about any of the stuff we talked about, whether it is Final Fantasy 15 and the Royal Edition. Are you one of the people who were, was an early adopter for it? You bought the season pass, you bought the full game, and now you're like, wait, I gotta buy more stuff, and then there's probably gonna be more DLC that I have to pay for this year coming out. I don't know about this. Let me know if you feel kind of ripped off there, or maybe, maybe you're a PC owner and you're like, cool, I was waiting for this game to come to the PC. I'm really happy. I only have to spend 50 bucks right now and I get everything everybody else spent $85 on. And then, well, if they're going to spend another 20, I get a $105 value for 50 bucks. Works for me. Or maybe you're one of the people who 
bought the base game, didn't really get into, didn't really look at the DLC, and now you're like, oh, cool, 20 bucks, I'll get everything. So it, I'm, I'm curious here from both sides here, if you're happy about it or if you're really, really mad about it. And also let me know what you think about the Monster Hunter PS4 Pro. Maybe you're excited to buy it. Comes with a physical copy, not too bad. And then, of course, the Theme Hospital, the two-point hospital announcement. Maybe you're somebody who really played the Theme Hospital games and you're super excited to see it kind of get a, a, a new, I guess, a new lease on life with this game. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.